here you see an arc, so a curve, and we want to approximate it by a polygon and then go to the limit of infinitely many infinitesimally small line segments because we know the length of straight line segments and can use that in the limit to get the exact length. If our arc, so our curve, is given as a function in one variable, so as f of x, then the length of one line segment is, well, the length of the edge from f of x1 to f of x2, if x1 and x2 are the x coordinates of the endpoints of this arc. And we know how to compute its length, namely we can use Pythagoras, and then we have that the length of the red line segment is the distance between the two x coordinates, so x2 minus x1 squared, plus the square of the distance between the function values, so the y coordinates, that is f of x2 minus f of x1 squared, and of that we need to take the square root. Now we know how to get the length of each of these line segments, and having in mind that we want to make them really small, does this remind you of something? It looks pretty much like the picture for the definition of the derivative, right? So keeping that in mind, we rewrite this a little bit. We divide the two summons under the square root by x2 minus x1 square, and to make up for it, we multiply the whole square root afterwards with x2 minus x1, and that gives us that the second summand under the square root actually becomes the first derivative at x1 or x2 close to x1. So in the limit of the distance between x1 and x2 to 0, the length of our red little line segment becomes square root of 1 plus first derivative at x square dx. Here's the formula again. The arc length s of the curve y that is given as a function of x from the left point x equal a to the right point x equal b is given by the formula that we derived on the last slide. The first integral is written with the derivative and the second one with the dy divided by dx, which is of course just the same, but sometimes it's useful to remember that the derivative is defined as such a limit because here we're a lot of thinking in little pieces. Let's do an example. Find the length of the curve y equal x to the power of 2 thirds from x equal 1 to x equal 8. So, to use our formula, we need the first derivative. The first derivative is 2 thirds x to the power of minus 1 third. And if we plug that in, computing the square, and putting everything on one fraction, then we see that we have a part of the function as the derivative there that asks for substitution. So we substitute u equal 9x to the power of 2 thirds plus 4 and get a much nicer integral which is 1 18th from 13 to 40 the integral over u to the power of a half du. 13 and 40 are changed boundaries because as you know when we substitute we also have to substitute the boundaries. So that we can easily compute and we set in the 13 and 40 for the boundaries and we get that the length of our curve is 40 times square root of 40 minus 13 times square root of 13 27 length units.